hello students today we are continuing with the discussions of 1857 revolt one of the major revolts took place in the year 1857 political administrative causes and also another one important causes for 1857 revolt was economic causes indian economy was mainly exploit exploited by the british company the primary motto of the political domination of india by british as as a means of economic exploitation first they colonized the territories expansion of their power and control by using a means of force and other means of exploitation the economic policies introduced by british were also benefited to the england and harmful to the indians the whole system particularly based on the interest of the british many articles including indian trade essential commodities spices pepper arachnid rice cardamom or huge demand in the european market made the east india company to hold monopoly over indian commodities india became a exporter of raw materials and importer of finished products and all the trade and commerce were went into the hands of the british they holding the monopoly of trade and commerce activities as a result of that indian indian industries began to disappear small scale industries cottage industries handicraft industries were began to disappear in india the land of revenue almost became unpopular in india the british from time being from 1790s onwards 1813 1830 different periods they introduced different land revenue systems these policies made british became rich and indians were become poorer and poorer they it, it not at all benefiting to the farmers the annexation of indian states resulted in the problem of unemployment the problem of shortage of raw materials and also many people were lost their jobs so the former families turned against british authorities leads to the outbreak of 1857 revolt we move further one by one what are the economic criteria leads to 1857 revolt first one the company's monopoly in trade both internal and external trade was monopolized by british servants indian merchant has to pay both inland and foreign duties inland or export and import duties india became the supplier of raw materials to britain the whole indian economy was changed into the suit the industrial requirements of england as usual we are studying in indian history the beginning of industrial revolution first was started in england and to feed the needs of the british industries india became a ground for supplier of raw materials at the low price and buyer of finished product or manufactured goods at high price in this way indians were not at all benefited by the new economic policy introduced by british in india all the export and import was controlled by british authorities another point the wealth of india was continuously drained from india to europe after the first battle of plassey 1757 onwards indian economy was completely drained by different means of source of drains administrative charges military charges giving pension to the officers along with that employment to fulfilling the requirements of the family members of the east india company and automatically india will be the place of drain to feed the needs of the british it affected the cottage industries industrial workers move from india countryside to the village level and so the villages were overcrowded the people were migrated from cities to the village level uh, one of the modern day historian dr ishwari prasad was rightly says that india became a milk giving cow to england while her own children suffered without milk that means that 
Indian people were suffered due to starvation. They are not in a position to produce any manufactured goods or manufactured commodities. India will be the just marketplace for finished products and Indian people were suffered or starvation of Indians due to the economic policies introduced by British. Uh, drain theory, one of the grand old man of India, Dada Bhai Navaroji in his book Poverty and Un-British Rule in India was highlighted that Indian economy was from 1757 to 1857 for about more than 100 years, Indian wealth was drained by different means, home charges, police, revenue, administration and uh, giving salaries to the officials, different means of sources, the Indian wealth was drained continuously by the British. Another point, the year 1793, Lord Cornwallis, the Governor General of Bengal, introduced permanent settlement of Bengal. According to that, the zamindars became the owners of the land. The company given ownership of land to the zamindars and zamindars were main priority to given more, uh, their motto was to earn more profit and they were completely neglected the sections of the cultivators. Automatically, the British companies ruined the cultivators and uh, the cultivators were suffered heavily due to the permanent settlement of Bengal. To provide duties to the zamindars, the peasants has to force to work in field sometimes during the time of famine or any natural calamities. Peasants were forced to take loan from the money lenders and that was resulted in a rural indebtedness in India. British also introduced other land revenue reforms in India. There was Rayatwari system, a direct settlement between the peasants introduced by Major Monroe in Madras and central provinces of India. Next, Mahalwari, Mahalwari system. That was also the system was introduced in the regions of Bengal, in the regions of Punjab, in the regions of Western India. And both the systems having its own effect the peasants were heavily suffered due to the new economic policies. The peasants, traders, industrialists were hard hit by the new economic policy introduced by, introduced by British. Large number was people, large number of peasants were reduced to a mere a poverty. Another factor, the economic decay of indigenous craft, craft and small scale handicraft industries were suffered due to the economic policy of British India. Stagnation of agriculture, Indian agriculture was became stagnant. To fulfill the needs of the British, Indians are forced to grow. Peasants were forced to grow commercial crops, indigo, opium. The needs of, uh, needs of the British were fulfilled by the Indians and that automatically leads to a stagnation of Indian agricultural commodities. It also connected with the lack of irrigation and other facilities to agriculture and its activities, poverty and famines, import duties were charged by British varies from 27 percent to 71 percent. These are the economic causes primarily responsible for the outbreak of 1857 revolt. Next uh, we are uh, continue with the other causes for the revolt. There was a social and religious causes for 1857 revolt. It may be easy to tolerate the British political injustice or administrative justice or economic injustice, but not easy to tolerate the religious interference of the British. Indians were not ready to accept the British interference in Indian religious policies. One of the main aim of the British was to convert Indians to Christianity and it's become fact clear to the Indians when the British were started conversion of activities in India. Martin Luther sent many Jesuits to India as a part of spread of Christianity or we can say that counter revolution, counter reformation beginning in the regions of Europe and it was spread to the regions of Asia and African continent. 
the jesuits with the main motto of conversion of peoples to their religion and present we having evidences that the christianity become the number one religion in the world due to that they started forcible conversion to the newly conquered newly colonized territories leads to a, the christianity become one of the major religions in the world the social reforms introduced by governor general like lord william benting lord herdings were also misunderstood by the people they are not in a positions to accept that the british policies british social economic reforms were misunderstood and they thought that they were doing it for the indians with the main sake of that convert indians to christianity as a result of the spread of education the culture there was also a great unrest among the people we having a example of that the british introduced english education uh, the famous the british educationist we can say that lord macaulay has given a responsibility of introduction of english education system in india the year 1835 he drafted a minute plan of introducing english education system in india and he opinion he opinions that indians were by blood color or race by they were indians but they were in taste opinion behavior like english our main motto was to civilize the barbaric people or uncivilized people to the category of civilized or barbaric people or the british were rightly said that it is a white man's burden they are the right person selected by god to send to india to educate the indians or civilize the indians as a part of that the british having a great responsibility to civilize indians and people of india was thought that it was one of the british motto to convert indians to christianity indians were also considered that inferior in their respect by the by compared to english they were insulted in public places all sort of bad words were used against indians the clubs and hotels of the europeans were prohibited the entry of the indians many indians were when they were visited european countries or united kingdom they were having a bitter experience that europeans were the board was put in front of the clubs and hotel by saying that indians and dogs were not allowed it is of the opinion that indians were ill treated or indians were particularly degraded by the europeans and they called themselves as pigs or dasyus in this way the british were continuously ill treating the people of indians and discrimination social discrimination was shown to the indians was automatically leads to a outbreak of 1857 revolt next point the religious activities of the christian missionaries the charter act of 1813 permitted the christian missionaries to enter india christian schools were started in india was criticized the indian schools were converted into be a place of christianity during the general famine of 1837 number of orphans destitutes were converted to christianity educated institution started in india by the opinions of churches or christian run christian run education institutions were says that our duty was to save the souls of pupils by making them to convert to christianity by which they honestly believed that only means of salvation by accepting christianity or follow the the principles of christianity the missionaries started girls schools and made the teaching of christian doctrines compulsory the bible was also introduced in schools and colleges the religious activities of the british officials was also suspicious 
about the British activities in India. Many British officers, magistrates, judges visited jails to convert to the Indian prisoners to Christianity. And converted Indians provided employment in the government services, only they were accepted Christianity or converted themselves to Christianity. Thank you.